Today we're gonna make a really, really simple Sunday sauce. We're gonna use a pork loin and we're gonna shred it. We'll go over all the ingredients right now. We have all our ingredients prepped and it's a very, very minimal amount of ingredients. I have one medium onion that was diced. I have about four ounces of pancetta, so that's a quarter pound. And I have two and a half pounds of pork loin. If you use a bone-in pork loin, probably want to go for a four pounder. And so I just want to talk about the tomatoes really quickly. So I used one whole can. So they're about three and a half uh, standard 28 ounce cans. So these are an excellent deal. They're $4, $4 and 29 cents, I believe at Costco. Now, if you don't have a Costco, you don't have a membership, you don't want to go there, you're going to spend a heck of a lot more buying 28 ounce cans of tomatoes. 28 to eight are the standard can of plum tomatoes in America. This is a Cento San Marzano can. Sometimes they're on sale for three, sometimes they're not on sale and they're $5. So it gets expensive when you're using these. These are a great alternative. I love Scofani, I use this often for my pizza. By me here, these are 229. I had a guy message me on Instagram the other day, Uncle Rico, if you watch this, he got these at Walmart by him in Pennsylvania for $1.19 a can. If you can do that, go pick up a bunch of them. Most uh, companies will put basil, a couple of basil leaves, just pull that out and remove it. If you want basil at the end, you put new fresh basil in there. I have a Dutch oven here. You don't need a Dutch oven. I'm gonna heat this to medium. It's gonna take about four minutes to heat up, four or five minutes. Since we have a lot of pancetta, we don't need a lot of olive oil in here. We have fat also on the pork loin. So I'm just gonna do like a tablespoon here, just a little bit, just to get it started and then we'll get all the pancetta in. Kind of smoking up the place. It's gonna take about eight to 10 minutes for your pancetta to render most of its fat. The pancetta is pretty good. We're gonna take it out, put it in here just for a second while we sear that pork loin. So there's all the pancetta. Let's put it over to the side. Take your pork loin, paper towels, and really, really dry it off. Dry it off as best you can. Salt and pepper, all sides, put a lot on, and then let's sear it. And we're gonna put it right in that hot pancetta fat. That looks good. All right, so that took about 15 minutes to cook it on all sides. So we got some really nice color on that. Turn this heat down to low. Give it a couple minutes and then we'll get the onions in. Still might be a little too high, but it'll be all right. If you had too much fat there, so say like you had like this much fat, you can take some out. I didn't use any garlic in this. I just didn't feel like it. If you wanna use garlic, go ahead. If you wanna use 20 cloves of garlic, go ahead. You need to take these recipes. You need to grab them. You need to then make them your own. You need to say, you know what? I don't like what Jim did on this. I'm gonna put this here. I still like Jim. I still think he did a good job. I think he does a good job with the videos, but I wanna change this. That's what I'm trying to teach you guys here. This is not paint by numbers. It's ridiculous. It takes all the fun out of this. This has to be fun. If it's not fun, you're never gonna wanna do this. You're gonna hate doing this. These onions have a lot of color. They're not burnt, but they're taking up all of that pancetta fat, okay? And all that pork fat right there. If you do wanna put garlic in, now would be the time after the onions have cooked for a few minutes. That's the time then to put it in so you don't burn your garlic. Now we're gonna add half a can of tomato paste. And if you use the whole can, it will be fine too. It really will be, trust me. And just mix it, let it, let it get in there with the oil and the pancetta fat. So that's been cooking for a few minutes. We're gonna put some wine in. We're gonna do about a cup of white wine. I have Sauvignon Blanc right here.
That's about a cup. I'm gonna turn the heat to about medium and we're gonna cook out this liquid, the liquid, the wine, the alcohol, a little bit. If you don't wanna use wine in here, you don't need to substitute anything. You take your wooden spoon, you take the edge and then you just scrape the bottom. So that removes the brown bits on the bottom there. The wine is cooked out enough, we're gonna put our tomatoes in. I'm gonna try it. All right. Right now at this time, we could even put the pancetta back in. If you want a crispy pancetta on your pot, on your pasta at the end, just save this, don't even do this. I'm just letting it cook in the whole time. All right, so bring this to a simmer. So it's bubbling a tiny bit. You don't have to really wait till it's completely at a simmer. Get that pork in there. Just get it submerged. And you have no problem getting this submerged in here because of the amount of tomatoes that was used. All right. How long is it gonna take? If you left a full pork wine, it would take longer for it to be able to fully shred. If you cut these into smaller, narrower pieces, you can accelerate the process. Let's cover this, and I'm gonna put it in the oven at 300 degrees. You do it on the stove top too. If you do it that way, it's probably take a little bit longer. Just make sure you really stir it if you keep it on your stove top so the bottom doesn't burn. So I've been checking it off and on. Even though it was covered, we probably lost about an inch in here. All right, but we're still pretty thin now because we did have it covered the whole time. If you had it cracked at all, you would have caused a ton of evaporation and you'd probably be left with probably be about two or three inches lower right here. So the pieces of pork have gotten substantially smaller. There they are right there. And this thing is essentially at the fall apart stage. So I'm gonna take a fork like this you can see how the pieces will just come right off. See that? Like I can break it apart right now if I want to. So I'm gonna put it back in the oven with the lid cracked. And you know, if you want it even thicker, you can just take the lid off completely, or you can just put this on the stove top and get it on medium and reduce some of it that way too. All right, I couldn't wait any longer. Had it uncovered, well, like a couple inches open, but we're good. And I love putting pork in sauce, like pork chops, pork neck bones, uh, country ribs, anything. It just gives it so much flavor. I mean, there's one of them, and this was a lot bigger when it went in originally. And there's the other one. This really is an inexpensive dish. Pork loin is one of the, gonna be one of the easiest things that you can find at a good price even now with all the price increases that have been going on. Oh, that is so good. I just made, and I don't know which when it's gonna come out, I just made chicken piccata pasta while this was in the oven and we just ate that, me and my son. And I gotta tell you, I think this is better. Now it does need a little bit of salt. I'm gonna put one teaspoon of salt in here. put a little bit of pepper. No sugar, I rarely add sugar to, to my sauce. I think if you start with good quality tomatoes, you really don't have to fool around with that. Water's coming to a boil. Put in two tablespoons of kosher salt. I'm going to use pappardelle again. Well, not again, I mean, depending on if you saw my other video I made with the short ribs. Very heavy, heavy sauce we have here. The pork, we want it to hold onto something thick and this is perfect. Now you could also use rigatoni, that would be excellent. Make sure you stir it a lot in the beginning because these type of thick pastas, they tend to stick. Pappardelle definitely tends to stick. Just heat your pan to like medium low. You don't need to be high here. That looks good. To start, we can always add more and we have more than half of it left over here. So we wanna cook the pasta to a little bit before it's al dente. And you know, when it's al dente is when you wanna eat it. You don't want it to be mushy or anything. Then I didn't drain it too well, there's enough 
a little bit of pasta water in there. I'm gonna get it all to coat very well. Just think for always for Sunday, dinners like this, Pecorino's better, but that's a prefer personal preference thing. And if you wanted to do fresh herbs or anything, definitely do it. It's so good and it's so easy, way easier than the short rib one. 